now we are going to discuss analysis of forces on traveler. You know that traveler runs on the ring and there is a loop of yarn which is passing under the traveler and from the traveler it goes on the bobbin. The other end of the yarn is actually going to the nip of the front roller. So, that loop of yarn starting from front roller to the lappet guide and from the lappet guide that may be balloon control ring in between and then it passes through the traveler and from the traveler to the surface of the bobbin. That is the path of the traveler. And when the traveler runs on the ring, which is basically a kind of track for the traveler, there are a lot of forces which will be acting on the traveler. And you are interested to know what are these forces and what is the implication of those forces on the spinning process. So, let us look at the diagram first. The blue circle that you see, this is indicating the ring. Then within the ring, we have the bobbin, this is the bare bobbin and then there is another circle where the color is yellow, it indicates the yarn which is wound on the bobbin. Now, here we have a traveler, this is our traveler. Now, the at the yarn that exists in between the traveler and the bobbin surface, here what happens? This is the yarn connecting the traveler to the surface of the bobbin. So, as the bobbin rotates, this loop, this yarn is under tension because it has to drag the traveler and therefore, the yarn will be under tension and let us say the tension which is acting on the yarn is represented by F w. Now, F w is making an angle and what is this angle? This angle is, we will be showing it here, that angle is angle alpha. This is the angle alpha here. And therefore, we can resolve the tension which is acting on the yarn, which is F w into two components, the component F t and the component F n. These are the two components. Now, we can say that what are the different forces which are acting on it. So, one is the F w, which is the winding tension on the traveler, this tension is acting. Then there is a frictional force F r, F r, which is also acting on the traveler, because the traveler is turning at a high speed there is going to be a centrifugal force on it, which is F c as shown it here and the another component of F w, which is acting radially inwards that is what is F n and that is the force normal to the ring, but this force is also basically acting on the traveler. And uh, <coughs> another force which acts is the gravitational force of, that is the weight of the traveler, which is also acting on the traveler. So, the traveler is subjected to different forces F w resolved into two components F t and F n and then we have F c and we have also F r, where F r is the friction well force. Now, we go from there to first trying to understand the winding tension which is acting on the yarn. Why this tension is important? Because this tension decides whether the yarn is going to 
break or not and the second thing that it is also going to affect the tightness of the winding of the yarn on the package. That is how tight the yarn would be on the package that also will be decided by the winding tension. So, the tension, the winding tension arises from the tension in the yarn between the traveler and the bobbin and it acts tangentially to the respect to the surface of the bobbin. So, you see the force Fw, we have drawn a tangent line and this force is acting as a tangent. So, it is due to what? Traveler movement overcoming the ring traveler friction. That is why do you have winding tension? Because it has to carry the traveler and there is a drag that it has to overcome because traveler motion will be resisted because of the friction between the ring and the traveler. The yarn movement overcoming yarn traveler friction, then the rotation of the balloon yarn against the air drag. We will see that the balloon tension and the winding tension, these two tensions are also connected by an equation. Hence, the balloon tension which is because of the rotation of the balloon yarn in between the traveler and the lappet guide also contributes to the winding tension. And also the rotation of the yarn in between the traveler and the package against the air drag. That is this yarn which is connected in between traveler and the bobbin as the traveler rotates or as the bobbin turns this yarn is also subjected to some amount of air drag because it is actually working within the medium of air and it has to overcome the resistance that the air is applying on it. So, these are the various reasons why there will be tension in the yarn. From here, we go to these two basic equations that is F w as I said can be resolved into two equations and these equations are one is number 1 F t which is F w sin alpha, alpha is known as the winding angle we call it winding angle and F n is F w cos alpha. So, one is the sine component and the other is the cos component. The next force is the frictional force between ring and traveler what happens? The as the traveler rotates and there is a centrifugal force which will be acting on it and hence the traveler can only move if it can overcome the frictional resistance. Under equilibrium this frictional resistance F r is going to balance F t that is the tangential the component of the force F w that is sine component of it and F r F t and F r is going to balance each other under equilibrium conditions. That is F t is going to be equal to F r when the system is in dynamic equilibrium. The other force is force normal to the surface of the ring that is the force F n and this force F n is how much? Fn is basically the cost component of Fw, which we have already stated in the previous slide. And the other force is the centrifugal force, that is force Fc. This is the centrifugal force. This force is also acting, and we will see the what is the magnitude of this force. First of all, let us look at the relationship between winding tension and bobbin diameter. Now, we have drawn a line O A, where O is the center of the bobbin and A is the point where the yarn is touching. 
the bobbin. Now, if you look at this triangle O A B, now this triangle O E B, look at this triangle, from this triangle we can write what is our sin alpha? Sin alpha is O A by O B. So, O A is the perpendicular and O B is the hypotenuse and therefore, what is our way? O A is going to be the radius of the bobbin d b by 2, where d b indicates the diameter of the bobbin and o b is d r by 2, where d r by 2, d r indicates the ring diameter. So, we can write sin alpha is o a by o b that is d b by 2 and d r by 2, where 2 2 will cancel and therefore, we will be left out with the ratio d b by d r. So, alpha basically depends upon the ratio of bobbin diameter to ring diameter and the ring diameter is constant. Once we choose a ring, the ring diameter does not change, but the bobbin diameter keeps on increasing. We start with the bare bobbin which has certain diameter and then as we keep on winding the yarn, the diameter of the bobbin is going to grow gradually. Therefore, if we can write that F r is how much is F w sin alpha, because F w sin alpha is basically F t. Why I am writing this? Because F t and F r are basically same as we have seen in the previous slide. So, because F t and F r are same, Therefore, F t is F w sin alpha, hence F r is also F w sin alpha and therefore, I can write that F w sin alpha is replaced d b by d r and it is becoming F w d b by d r. From this, we can write that F w is becoming F r into d r by d b. This is the equation number 4 and this equation gives us an idea that how F w is going to change as d r remains constant, but d b is changing and therefore, we can expect F w to change. Now, F r generally remains practically constant, the kind of speed at which we operate and the F t and F r remains fairly constant. And have Therefore, from here we can write that F w is basically becoming inversely proportional to 1 upon diameter of the bobbin, because F r is practically constant, d r is also constant and have F w inversely proportional to diameter of the bobbin. That means, the winding tension F w keeps on changing. So, what we can expect that winding tension will decrease as the bobbin diameter increases. So, initially when I am winding on the bare bobbin, the diameter of the bobbin is minimum and therefore, the winding tension is maximum there, but when I am winding on a larger bobbin diameter, by the time I have already wound some material on the bobbin and diameter has grown and when I am winding on a larger diameter, the tension is going to decline. That is what we can understand from this analysis. Now, angle of wind alpha to keep the winding tension within tolerable limit in order to avoid too many end breaks the angle of wind is not allowed to be less than 27 degree. That is the limit that is generally put. If the angle is less than 27 degree, we would expect too many end breaks during spinning operation. The kind of yarn that we spin and the strength that the yarn has 
the spinning will be will not be commercially viable because of too many breaks if the angle of wind is less than 27 degrees. Now, 2 V on the safe side let us say alpha is 30 degree if we keep it. Then we can write sin 30 is dB by dr and therefore, dB becomes dr by 2. That means, diameter of the empty bobbin dB, the smallest diameter should be half of ring diameter. That is how we can decide for a given ring what diameter of the ring bobbin we choose. I am saying about the empty bobbin part only. Otherwise, if we want to use a bobbin which is still smaller, then alpha is going to be less and therefore, winding tension is going to increase. As a result, too many breaks we will encounter. That will be the consequence. So, the limit of alpha is 27 degree, but to be on the safe side, we can keep it around 30 degree. But if it is more than 30, there is no problem. So, 30, 35 or anything, any value more than 30 is always good. But the why do you want to keep it at the threshold limit? Because we want to increase the quantity of yarn in the bobbin. And therefore, if we use a smaller diameter bobbin, we can put on more yarn on it. However, as I said, there is a limit to the minimum bobbin diameter that we can go. And if we cross that limit, then we will encounter too many breaks and we will not be able to spin at all. Now, we go to the centrifugal force and frictional force. Centrifugal force, we all know the formula of centrifugal force. We have all studied at your school level also. And what is this formula? Formula is stated in equation 5. That is, it is always m r omega square f w sin alpha. And what is f r? As we have discussed in the previous slide, we are putting these values here. And from there, if we simplify, that is, we bring f w part on the left hand side, and then we take f. After doing this, then we are writing, we are actually ignoring this part. Why you are ignoring? This is because the mu f w cos alpha is too small in comparison to the sign component. And therefore, if we ignore this, then f w sin alpha is going to be equal to this mu m dr by 2 omega square. And therefore, f w is going to be mu m dr omega square by 2 into sin alpha. That is going to be the winding tension. So, you can find out that what are the parameters which are important to affect the winding tensions. And parameters are mu, m, dr, omega and alpha. So, we can find out now the winding tension in terms of traveler's rotational speed. Instead of the speed expressed in terms of radian per second, if we want the rotational speed with which we will be mostly familiar, then we can write F w is going to be 2 pi square mu m dr n square t by sin alpha, where omega is 2 pi n t. And this n t indicates the rotational speed of the traveler. And therefore, this equation can be changed into as shown in equation number 9. So, omega is basically replaced by n t. And as a result, what we get? We get an additional constant factor pi, which is there in this equation. Now, we may be interested to write this equation in terms of spindle speed. 
because we know that the travel rate speed and spindle speed, the differences are very, 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 very low. So, for all practical purpose, Ns and Nt can be considered to be almost equal. In the ascate, what we can write? The same equation we can write, we replace n square t by n square s. That is the only change here. We do this, rest of the things remain same. Now, sometimes we may, we may be interested to write the equation in terms of travel as surface speed also. So, if we want to express it in terms of surface speed, then the equation will be what? Because surface speed is v t is equal to r omega. So, we can take the equation 9 and we replace omega by what? v t by r. So, omega square we replace change it and we ultimately arrive at the equation number 11 that is f w becomes 2 mu m e square t divided by dr into sin alpha. This is what we get. So, we, it is the same equation only we are trying to express them in terms of traveler rotational speed or surface speed of the traveler or by the spindle speed. So, once this equation is remains in our mind, we can immediately say what would happen if I change these parameters. Like if I change the mass of the traveler, if I use a heavy traveler, the winding tension is going to increase because Fw is directly proportional to m. So, heavy traveler means more tension in the yarn and therefore, if it exceeds the strength of the yarn, the yarn is going to break. So, very heavy traveler we may not be able to use. Similarly, mu mu is the coefficient of friction between traveler and ring. Therefore, what happens when the traveler burns out? Then there is a change in mu value between the traveler and the ring. The mu, this mu is the dynamic coefficient of friction, we have to remember between ring and traveler. So, what happens as the traveler runs on the ring with time? there will be change in the surface characteristics of the traveler. And a time will come when the traveler will reach almost its life and by that time what will happen? The mu value between ring and traveler changes, it actually increases and therefore, we start encountering more and more breaks as we are going or reaching the life at the end point of the traveler basically. In that case, also winding tension is going to increase. So, anyway, this is how we can relate the winding tension with these parameters. Now, the remarks that we can make from this analysis, they are given here. Since the winding is carried out on a conical surface continuously, so, you have to remember that if you know when the way we are building the bobbin, the in the case of ring spinning, we are continuously winding on a conical surface. It is not like the roving bobbin making. While we build the roving bobbin, we wind the roving on a surface which is constant in terms of its diameter there is no change unless we complete one layer. So, when you go from one layer to another layer, then only there is a change in diameter. However, from bottom to top or top to bottom, there is no change in diameter while one particular layer is being formed. But in the case of ring spinning, this is not so. Once the base has been built, then there is a conical face that gets created and the yarn is then wound on this conical surface continuously and we reach the 
top end of the bobbin. So, we are continually actually winding the yarn on a conical surface and therefore, bobbin diameter continuously changes and as a result the alpha value, this alpha value is going to change, the alpha is the winding angle. So, this conical part on which we wind, it is known as chase. We say chase length is so much and chase has a shoulder and a nose. If we draw this, it will look like this, that is a, a From here to there, we are continually winding yarn on this on a conical phase always. So, this is known as the chase and this is the nose part of the chase and this part where the diameter is maximum, we call it shoulder. So, this is basically our shoulder. So, shoulder is here and this part is nose and on the conical face will be always winding the yarn. A continuous change in sin alpha will make sinusoidal variation in winding tension. So, when you are winding at this point, suppose point A and this is let us say nose is point B, when I am winding on A, diameter is maximum, alpha value is going to increase and when I am winding near the nose that is B point, the alpha value will reduce. So, there is a constant change. So, if this is the bobbin, bare bobbin diameter, it is going to come here. So, this change in the winding on diameter means there is changing winding tension and the winding tension will change in this fashion as depicted in this graph that we will get a gradual rise in tension and it will fall again rise and fall. And what is this part? This part is the while while winding near the chase. So, gradually tension will rise as the ring rail is going up, we will reach the maximum value and then it will again go down when the ring rail is going down and you are close to the shoulder part of the chase. So, from going from nose to shoulder and back to nose again, we will find a change in tension in a cyclic manner as has been depicted in this diagram. The other thing is the frictional force F r undergoes small variations and considered to be practically constant. Component F t that is this component also remains fairly constant. Winding tension changes due to changes in the winding angle and why it is changing? As I said that the angle alpha is actually continuously changing and therefore, the winding tension is also going to change. Okay. So, let us now discuss this point, condition of traveler in plane through the spindle axis. Look at these two diagrams now. Now, we are considering the as if it is a cross sectional view. So, this T cross sectional part is basically the cross section of the ring and the traveler cross section also is shown here, this is the traveler. So, we have ring and we have traveler. So, here is ring and 
this one is traveler. So, we have ring and traveler. Okay. So, let us see what forces are acting on it now. When you look at try to analyze the forces in plane through the spindle axis, F w acting at an angle alpha which we have already discussed earlier. F b is the component of the balloon tension. So, this is the A b component acting tangentially as shown in this diagram. Okay. And the A b component pulls the traveler upward at an angle gamma to the y axis as shown in the diagram. This force is trying to pull the traveler upwards. Okay. So, now if w the component of the, the force f w which is f w cos alpha and f b they are acting together on the traveler and the resultant is f l which is here. So, the resultant of f w and f b is f l and f l is angle is acting at an angle delta. Okay. And what is the what f l is going to do? The f l is will draw the traveler upwards as a result of this. So, f b and f b and f w cos alpha are acting on the traveler, the resultant is acting which is F L at an angle delta and this force is going to pull the, this black uh, circle is indicating the yarn. So, this is you have to uh, imagine this to be an yarn cross section, so this, this is going to be pulled because of the F L. So, as the ring rail will go up and down the angle delta is going to change because f w cos alpha and a b both are going to change as with the uh, upward and downward movement of the ring rail. The other force as we have discussed it earlier f c is the centrifugal force on the acting on the traveler also and f n is going, be, going to be the normal force that is the force which is normal to the ring. This is the force which is normal to the ring. So, at constant traveler speed forces F t, F c and F n are in equilibrium that is when the speed is constant and the machine is running the forces F t, F c, F n are in equilibrium. The forces F w and F b and the angle delta that is this force, this force and the angle delta are subjected to substantial variation during ring rail movement because why it is happening? Because as the ring rail moves up the alpha value is going to change. So, you go from shoulder to nose imagine and therefore, the diameter of the bobbin is going to reduce and hence the alpha value is going to change and therefore, F w cos alpha will also change. At the same time as we go up the balloon dimension is reducing, the balloon is becoming smaller, the tip part of the balloon is at the lappet guide and the other end of the balloon is at the point of traveler. So, if the ring rail moves up balloon becomes shorter. So, balloon is becoming shorter due to that there will be some change in FB. At the same time alpha is going to change also because alpha is going to gradually reducing because I am going towards the nose and hence with the in with the upward and downward movement of the ring rail both F b and F w cos alpha both of them are going to change and therefore, F l is also going to change simultaneously because F l is the resultant of F b and F w cos alpha alright and hence what will happen? 
its effect will come on the the way the traveler is located or the orientation of the traveler with respect to the ring. We will see that now the condition of the traveler in now in the tangential plane. If we sit from the other plane tangential plane, the yarn does not run absolutely vertically. Look at this, this balloon yarn, actually the yarn is inclined. It is a, it's in a 3D space. Why it is inclined? Because the yarn has to overcome the resistance of the air and therefore, the yarn will be slightly inclined. It is not absolutely vertical. It follows a curve path due to resistance created by the balloon rotation. The balloon tension F B is actually inclined upwards at an angle, this tension. Balloon tension can be resolved in two components F A and F Y. F Y presses the traveler upward against the ring. So, this force F Y will try to pull the traveler up against the ring and F A will act as a restraining force on the traveler that is the you know, net effect of F A will be and F Y is going to actually pull the traveler up. F A being relatively small we can ignore the component F A whereas F y is little larger. Air resistance on the traveler also can be ignored because as the traveler runs, obviously traveler is the resistance to the movement of the traveler not only from the ring, but also from the air because it is moving in the medium of air. But the resistance to the air we can always ignore in comparison to other forces, this force will be very little because cross sectional area of the traveler is very, very little. It is very, very tiny you know, ring, in the, in the, which is basically bent in the form of a ER ring. So, so many forces are acting not only forces are acting, the forces are also changing. Some forces are fairly constant, but some other forces are continuously changing. And as a result of that, the orientation of the traveler with respect to the ring is also changing. That means, we will discuss this point now. Let us say when the ring rail is near the nose of the chase, that is where the diameter is minimum. At that moment, F w is also maximum and therefore, F w cos alpha component also will be maximum. What is the consequence of this? The yarn draws the free end of the traveler upward. So, the yarn will draw the free end of the traveler upwards on the left hand side a result of this and the traveler is going to straighten up. As you see here the traveler is turning because this component has increased in magnitude. So, angle delta is going to be less now. This is more being more the resultant will be not the angle that resultant makes with F w cos alpha is going to be less and as a result of this the yarn is going to pull the traveler and the traveler is going to tilt the way it has been shown in the diagram. The other ex extreme end is the when the ring rail is near the shoulder of the chase. At that time that opposite action is going to happen because at that moment 
f w is going to be f w cos alpha is going to be minimum now, because I am winding near the shoulder and therefore, this yarn it will be shifting towards the middle of the traveler and as a result it is going to turn in the anti-clockwise direction. In the previous case, the turning was in the clockwise direction and in this case, the turning is going to be in the anti-clockwise directions. So, that means, while the traveler is running on the ring, its orientation with respect to the ring is not constant its orientation is continuously changing. So, that flexibility we have to keep in the traveler that, that means, that has to be some play between the traveler design and the ring on which it fits. It cannot be a tight fit situation. In that case, the yarn will not be able to tilt the traveler at all. Because of the forces which are acting on the traveler, the traveler is continually adjusting itself in order to balance and that is a positive feature of the design part of the traveler and the ring. And uh, without that probably the, the yarn will finally break, because if I do not allow the traveler to tilt at all the forces will increase and the traveler might, the yarn might break. So, in a way traveler is continually adjusting itself, there is change of speed of the traveler, and there is change of orientation of the traveler. With this, the forces part which are acting on the traveler is over, we can now discuss some numericals. So, we will now take up two numericals. The first one is the winding tension is 30 centinewton when the bobbin diameter is 30 mm. What is going to be the frictional force on the traveler if the ring diameter is 40 millimeter? So, we have been asked to calculate the frictional force which is acting on the traveler and what is given? is the winding tension and the bobbin diameter at that moment. Okay. So, how to go about it? The problem is very simple solution. Now, we already know that F t is going to be F w sin alpha, but alpha value has not been given to us. Right. And the other equation we have learnt is F t is going to be F r when the system is in dynamic equilibrium. That is the force which is trying to move the traveller or which is acting tangential to the ring on the traveller which is F t and the force which is opposing it is F r they should be equal when the system is in dynamic equilibrium. Now, from here we know what is sin alpha, we have learned it is the ratio of d b by d r bobbin diameter by ring diameter. So, even though we do not know sin alpha, but we know that sin alpha is connected to bobbin diameter and ring diameter. Now, ring diameter has been given which is 40 mm and bobbin diameter also has been given that is 30 mm. Therefore, we can write F r which is equal to F t and F t in turn is F w sin alpha. So, and sin alpha is in turn d b by d r. So, we can write F r is going to be F w d by by d r. So, here now we get all the values. 30 that is the winding tension, this 30 
indicates the bobbin diameter 30 mm and this 40 indicates the diameter of the ring. So, if we take this, we multiply, we find the value 22.5 centinewton. That means, the frictional force which will be acting on the travel head is 22.5 centinewton. So, this kind of problem or numericals you may face in the exam. So, the basic has to be clear which are what are the forces which are acting and what forces are balancing each other and the other thing you need to know that the relationship between winding angle and the diameters of bobbin and ring. We will now take up another numerical. A traveler is running at 30 meters per second on a ring of diameter 50 mm at 11,500 rpm. The weight of the traveler is 90 milligram. The traveler CG is at a distance of 3 mm from inside ring diameter. How much centrifugal force will be exerted on the ring by the traveler? So, we will now see how to solve this problem. We have to find out the centrifugal force. So, we need to know the formula for centrifugal force. And here is a diagram, a cross sectional view of the ring and the traveler. Look at the location of the CG of the traveler and the CG of the traveler is at a distance of 3 mm from the inner edge of the ring. So, which is this. This distance we can say this distance is S for us. All right. So, the formula for the centrifugal force is well known. It is always m v square by r. So, in this case what we have written? m we have written as w by g. w is the weight and g is the gravitational acceleration. So, that is a w by g. v is the velocity that is at which the traveler is running not the angular speed, but it is linear speed. And the r is we have calculated based on this that is what is the ring diameter that is 50 mm given and as stated here that this CG of the travel air is at a distance of 3 mm from inside ring diameter. That means, the total diameter of the circle on which the CG of the travel air is lying is actually dr plus 2 s. So, we are writing dr plus 2 s divided by 2 that gives me the radius of that circle on which the C g of the traveler is lying. And hence the centrifugal force formula becomes 2 w v square by g into dr plus 2 s. Now, let us see what are the parameters which are given here diameter of the ring is given which is 50 mm and that makes it 0 0.05 meter. We convert it into meter. W is the weight of the travel air which is in milligram and S the distance as shown here is 3 mm that is 0 0.003 meter. So, centrifugal force formula is now we apply. So, we substitute the values and what we get? 2 into W, W we have to convert into gram first and then to kg. So, conversion to gram divided by 1000, from gram to kg we have to divide by another 1000. So, therefore, we find 1000 into 1000 below the figure 90 and the velocity is 30, therefore, the 30 square. So, if we substitute these values, we get a figure 0.295 kg, which is equivalent to 2.891 Newton. That is the centrifugal force, which is a tiny traveler of only 90 milligram in weight, not even 1 gram. It is applying a force of 
almost 0.3 kg. So, what is could be the ratio of the centrifugal force to weight of the traveler? So, if we take the ratio, we take the force 0.295 kg, we write it in terms of gram here and then also we write the weight of the traveler in gram which is 0 0.09 and if we take these two, take the ratio of these two, we get a figure 3278. Just imagine a figure. That means, the tiny traveler is applying a force which is more than 3000 times its own weight. That kind of force the traveler is actually exerting on the ring. 3278 times in the present case. So, it will be always somewhere close to 3000, maybe slightly less, maybe slightly more. So, that kind of force the traveler can generate, which is 3000 times its own weight. And the traveler is still surviving. Now, we go to the next question that if the traveler contact surface area is 0.5 mm into 0 0.02 mm, 0.2 mm, that is the area is 0.1 millimeter square, how much pressure is going to act on the ring? So, force we have calculated, now we want to know the pressure part. So, pressure we all know is the force per unit area. So, that what is centrifugal force divided by area. So, if we write the value of the force and the area. So, this is in Newton and this is the area in millimeter square. So, our unit is Newton per millimeter square and this value we get 28.91 Newton per millimeter square. So, close to you can say 29. So, that kind of pressure 29 Newton per millimeter square in a 1 millimeter squared area almost 30 Newton force is acting. Now, if you Newton if I convert it to let us say we know that 10 Newton is close to 1 kg roughly on an average you can say roughly exact figure is 9.81 Newton is 1 kg. So, that means, if I divide this value by 10, I get a figure 2.89. So, 2.89 kg per millimeter square is the pressure. So, almost 3 kg of force is acting on 1 millimeter square area that kind of pressure is generated by the tiny traveler. And therefore, we all know that there is tremendous amount of wear and tear that happens to the ring and traveler and the traveler still survives 7 to 8, 7 to 8 days generally sometimes you can go up 10, 12 days also depending upon the, the quality of the traveler it has a life which could be a week or maybe one and a half week when he is running 24 7 and a ring life could be 2 years, 3 years. So, even though so much pressure is acting on it, still these materials are strong enough to withstand this pressure and because of this pressure there is a tremendous amount of friction and that friction leads to generation of friction heat and hence a lot of heat is generated between the traveler and the ring and this heat could be a source of problem for us also. It is a source of problem especially when you try to spin synthetic fibers, fibers which are thermoplastic in nature that is polyester especially. In the case of acrylic also it can create problem, the heat can change the molecular structure of the fiber in the case of acrylic, in the case of polyester or nylon 
it can that could be partial melt on of the fiber for cotton viscose it will not create problem because you know cotton viscose these fibers have no melting point uh, they don't even they don't soften but this is what is going to happen therefore there's a lot of you know metallurgy metallurgical research is involved in the ring for development of the right material for the ring and also for the traveler so with this we close today's session thank you